Oh, right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Diamond in the Rough, representing Sidestorm Gaming, and already opening up with a gas first opening. This is Rough in the bottom left, one of the most creative Terran players out there. Player who always reminds us of the fact that you can play incredibly technical, high tech harassment, fancy, tech switchy, clever StarCraft at a GM level, even without being one of these just, you know, world champion maru level players who turtles to five base late game to get there uh rough and master of two base tech he's up against aura in the top right now aura is a pretty good jam player as well who you can see has that lovely war pigs decal kind of makes me cheer for aura a little bit i'm a, I'm a bit of a pig fan uh, as you guys can imagine one of my favorite animals and aura is just doing a standard reaper expand by the looks of it blind so a bit greedy but you know what? Ruff is also playing blind. He's going Marine first into a very quick factory. So I think he's going to go maybe multiple Marines. Actually, he might just go straight Reactor. Of course, this is dangerous because one Marine loses to a Reaper. But what often happens if the Reaper runs in, gets hit by the Marine from the high ground, the Reaper just backs off because it doesn't know if there's more than one. So I think you'll be okay with that. Let's see if this Reaper does go straight across the map behind it. Reactor straight away. Or oh, this is such a greedy build order, mate. I actually think Ruff's build order is, 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 is not as greedy. You might be like, what, why? It's because his factory finishes earlier, guys. So he can actually start building Hellions, but there's no second production facility. So to go straight for a reactor as Aura is, in my opinion, way greedier than what Ruff is doing. Because even if Ruff gets caught by a Reaper, kills his Marine, he's going to have two Hellions coming out by about, what, 240? 245 something like that so even if this reaper gets a bit of damage and disruption rough actually has something coming out whereas aura only now is going to be able to start building marines or reapers so here we go marine will fight against that reaper put up a decent little fight does dodge the grenade i mean it doesn't even dodge it it's just aura misplaced the grenade i guess hellions are on the way aura did not commit could have killed the marine in the scv but seeing that reactor you got to get out of here aura if aura kills that scv and leaves that would be super pro rough trying to repair but that scv bugged out a little bit and stayed too long, buddy. Oh, can he get the SCV? Ah, oh, Ruff not quite microing that repair either. He does end up losing two SCVs. So not a bad trade for Aura. And now Aura knows there is a factory with a reactor. So wisely putting a bunker down, pumping out Marines of his own. Tech Lab goes down for Aura as well as a Starport. And that main base saturated. Aura has the quicker expansion up. Orbital already almost finished. And Ruff, of course, his expansion's delayed. Now, I wouldn't mind a Hellion drop to start things off. Could be really exciting. And, um... Is it, is it attack lab or a medevac? Medevac, 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 come on. Show me that drop play, Ruff. Show me what you got, baby girl. I, I really don't know what he'll do. Okay, he's gonna go attack lab. Maybe Banshee opening could be nice. Ruff has some of the weirdest TVT builds out there. And he always finds a way to just make the game so oddball. Like, I've, I've lost my fair share of TVTs against Ruff. It always feels like he's so tricky. It's hard to just maintain your focus in the midst of constantly being surprised by what he does. But a nice Hellion dive. He's going to get a Mule and SCV. A few more SCVs will stack up here. Then Marines being a bit too afraid on the high ground. He could have unloaded that bunker a bit earlier. Aura will clean this up. But I do think this was worthwhile for Ruff. Look at that. It's a nice micro. So he gets three Marines, four SCVs. Uh, he also killed a Mule there and got a bit of mining time. So I think that was worthwhile. Uh, I do think if Aura pulled those Marines over here and unloaded the bunker earlier, he probably could have fought it. Um, but he was a bit afraid to pull out of the bunker, and that's why Ruff got so much damage. Now, Hellions and Banshees are on the way, but wait, no, that's not Banshee tech. I see the tech lab bubbling away, upgrading, and I'm like, oh yeah, he's going Cloak Banshee. No, no, no. He's going Corvid Reactor Raven. So Ruff is going to open two Starport Raven. Now, this seems stupid, but who did this? That was Terran who made this Oh man, was it Cure doing this or Mar Someone was experimenting with this. I think I saw Special do it as well. I've seen some really top tier Terrans do double Starport Raven. You have to like four or five Ravens really early. Normally, I don't think they bother with the Raven energy upgrade, but uh, Ruff might be able to push this even further. And the thing is, pre-stim shields, lots of Marines getting out. Ravens do dominate. Unfortunately for him though, I don't know if he's going to get his units in time because we've already got two tanks, eight Marines coming out. If the Barracks spots this though, he could get in position, but he's only got four Hellions and a Raven. And he was supply blocked on 46 for a while there. He's now building a lot more depots. So he, sh he shouldn't be supply blocked for a while. But with only one Raven, four Hellions and two Marines, I don't think Ruff can defend this attack, guys. The Barracks does see it. He saw I think he saw it. Barracks doesn't have great vision. He's pulling up there. He's got to pull the Marines as well. He's got to pull the boys everything. He needs everything to defend this push. Pull the boys. Auto turret as well. Oh, Aura actually runs away. Aura leaves the tank behind and runs away. Aura, I don't think... I think he could have just pulled back from the auto turret and the Hellions. But if he unloaded and committed there, 
That would have been really hard. I think Aura just saw, oh, he's ready for it. I need to pull out. Didn't quite process the fact that, hey, that was only a couple of Hellions and one Raven. There was not that many units there. And now he's going to try to run home. The Hellions of Rough go out there. He says, hey, dickhead, get out of here. And Aura gets chased back to his side of the map. So good, good jump on that by Rough. And I think with the SCVs on it, as it unloaded, Aura probably couldn't really fight. But a real shame he left the tank behind. He's now walked the other tank home. So this is only about six Marines. There's more Hellions and Ravens building up here in the main base. Uh, you do not want to commit to that. I think as Aura, you really want to get to the next stage of this game. But he's building one Engineering Bay and a fourth gas. Is this a mech build? Is this going to be a mech versus mech game? Like Raven Hellion mech versus versus ground uh, ground mech? Like tanks and Hellions after this? It might be. There's Vikings being built for Aura. Remember, you don't have anything but your Ravens. You've got one Viking as rough, and that's it. That's not going to do too well versus the four Vikings. Aura's going to dive in. Aura could find some big damage here. It's going to go straight for that main base. Hellions are going to come back. The SCVs get a decent little surround there, and that's going to, of course, cause some big damage. You don't want to drop too many auto turrets here, because I don't think you're going to be able to kill them all. He does get one medevac. Can he get the other one, though? Might lose some more damage on the natural. Hellions are pretty quick, though. You don't really want to unload. As Aura, you just want to get out of there and... Ruff does go for the auto turret, but if you don't get the kill, I don't think that's really worth it just to damage a medevac. So a little wasteful on his energy, but Aura is second guessing himself, spending a bit too much time. So if Ruff wants to, he could absolutely run this medevac down and uh, cut it off on its way home. But for now, he wants to go across the map. That third command center is sticking out like a sore thumb. Aura is indeed playing mech going to three factories. Ruff is going building armor? Why would you go building armor right now? Okay, that just doesn't make any sense. Does that, that doesn't help auto turrets, does it? Wait, does building armor help auto turrets? Oh my god. Ravens! Oh my god, the interference matrix is the auto turrets. He's gonna dive on top. Hellions, go forward! The Hellions are attacking a refinery! Oh no, Miss Micro from Ralph! And he loses most of his Ravens to the Vikings. Aura shuts this down. I mean, you could force the third to lift with the Hellions, but that was a great fight there for Aura, and building armor was not ready in time. Not that it matters, because if it was Marines, having two extra armor matters a lot. But against tanks that are doing 70 damage in siege mode. Oh, it's only 68 damage now. It's not even 69. Ha ha ha. Not really working out for Ruff, who's going to take a third on location. But as always, so committed to two-base tech. I think he would have been better running in and auto-turreting the mineral lines. Hindsight's 2020, of course. We get to see everything he doesn't. Now, the building armor's finished. That gives plus two armor. So, a supply depot, normal buildings go from one to three armor. Planetary fortress goes from three to five armor. Do the auto turrets get more armor? I will check that in the next fight. The problem for Ruff is he doesn't have any things that fight good. He only has Ravens, which take a long time to gather energy. He's going to try and repair the bunker, repair these units, and then probably take gases. He's building turrets everywhere, which means Ruff doesn't even know he's playing against Mech. Because Mech is not really going to drop you or even air harass you that much. So he's building turrets everywhere. Meanwhile, Aura is like, eh... I'm good. I got Vikings. I'll be fine. So Ruff spending a lot of money on this defensive ring of turrets, which I love against Bio, but up against the fellow mech player, not as important. And Ruff's production facilities are way behind because all he's doing is making Hellions and Ravens right now. Aura goes for a sneaky base in the top left. Oh, I like it because it's hard to see it spread out to a fourth. But he's like, yeah, if I just hide a base, I could just drop all my mules here. As long as it goes unnoticed, it can just build a few SCVs and slowly start mining gas itself. It's such a good hidden base that you don't need to stretch that very slow mech style out to defend. And going up to five factories here, fourth or fifth command center even. Aura is, oh, and he's like trying to set tanks up in all the little tricky positions. Dude, Aura's got a really good setup. And Ruff, I don't know if he finds any damage in here. He's going to go fusion core and third star. So he's going to try and transition off Raven Hellion into BCs without a single tank. I mean, that is madness for Ruff. He is dropping a fourth on location, but Aura finds it and, oh, cancelled. Ah, oh, I think that was a bit unnecessary, but I guess his Hellions and Ravens are all on the other side of the map, so this is going so well for Aura right now. Ruff not confident in this three base versus a five base Terran. Aura just has more economy. Double armory for the upgrades will start up. Ruff does start his double armory now as well, so at least he can start air upgrades. Uh, who scanned who? It looks like Ruff scanned here. Oh no, Aura's, Aura sees the army coming in. There's turrets, tanks, Vikings for days. I don't think this is going to work for Ruff because he's flying into missile turrets. He does drop a lot of auto turrets. Oh, he gets a few more down, gets a few more down, but there's too many tanks. Oh, this is a horrendous fight for Ruff. He tries to force the issue into a well-entrenched position. 
And you can tell that Russ just getting antsy. Aura is playing a bit more of this normie TVT where he just wants to sit there and, and defend and jerk it. He's very happy to just hold the angle, so to say. If we're talking FPS terms, he's like, no, nope, just going to stand here holding the angle. Russ, the guy who, who just doesn't have the discipline to do that. And he's like, no, nah, got to get out. Got to go, got to go, got to go make a play. It's what makes this playstyle so much fun. But in this scenario, he's miles behind against Aura. Now, uh, if he could find that top left base, that would be great. It means it wouldn't really get that much value. But Aura for now, moving on out. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way, 3 BCs are on the way, and there is only 7 Vikings. So if the first BCs can fly in and do big damage, that could equalize, but the 4th and the 5th base are just so late behind this, Ruff still only on about 60 workers, and I don't know how he could possibly defend this push. Aura's not even brought half of his siege tanks, he's left 5 tanks spread across his bases. If Aura brought all of those, he could kill Ruff right now. I honestly think Ruff is completely dead in this game. I, I guess the BCs will come out just in time to beat the vikings i think bcs can win three three bcs versus nine vikings especially if a few of them fly into the turrets oh that's that's really important every bit of damage on those vikings is huge one of them almost dies another one does die and this base is taking some damage the widow mines are in range but for some reason the tanks are shooting the planetary instead that's a bit bizarre hellbat counter attack oh no ruff's trying to bust in with a hellbat counter they're very tanky units but oh can he even get in there the three tanks are just clearing him up. Ruff's doing so many weird little creative plays, but it's just not working out, man. Yeah, that tank will clear this up pretty easily. As long as he, like, lands some Vikings or something here. Yeah, brings back some Hellions. He's killed Ruff's fourth and uh, third and fourth base. He's got a new expansion down here, but Ruff is in huge trouble. And he's just lucky that Aura pulled home for that. If Aura keeps going, Aura probably wins the game. Battlecruisers are going to come out and try to clear up this tank siege, but that reveals... Ruff's uh, trick card here, essentially, and, and that's not going to work out too well. Look at that. He kills one. Did he just scan? Or is that... That's Aura's scan. So that's Aura's scan. Okay, so Aura does do the scan there. Um, for some reason, we aren't getting scan graphics on the minimaps. Not sure why. Yes, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, three BCs on the way. He's got 1-1 one, one upgrades about to finish for his air. 2-2 two, two, drilling claws on the way for Aura. Aura's building Vikings going up to three starports. Aura has 91 SCVs and is also getting turrets at the bases. Now, turrets are not bad. But it's not as important as just having enough Vikings or even Thors. A uh, Thor starts up. Thors actually wreck BCs. And yeah, he queues up the second one as he gets the money. Because in high impact payload, they have 11 range. Even with though Yamato's good versus Thors, you've got the air to surface battery is only 6 range. So basically the Thors like double the range. Yeah, you can Yamato from maybe 8 range away, something like that. I'm not sure the exact. I think about 8 range. By the time you get Yamato off, half your BCs are dead. That's if you've, if you've got similar supply of Thors versus BCs, like it's actually really bad for the BCs. The BCs kind of have to go around and harass their way to victory. So I feel like being on pure battle cruiser, it gives you no flexibility. I mean, he's got some Widow Mines, which is cute. If they land hits on the Vikings, they can totally mess stuff up. So the BCs definitely could do some stuff. He wants to get those Vikings. Oh, is he going to teleport over here and like bait them in? What is this? Oh, he's going for the Yamato. Oh, he's trying to chase the Vikings because he knows the Vikings are going to kite from the battle cruisers. So he puts the Widow Mines behind because he wanted Aura to kite backwards into that. But look at this micro from Ruff. Oh, he doesn't lose a single BC. He kills like five Vikings with Yamato. And we see that's not enough Vikings. You need to have another 10 Vikings and then you can chase the BCs down here, right? But without that, he loses a lot of Vikings. Uh, in total, 14 have died. Ruff keeps the base up. He's hanging on right now. Aura's got a bigger economy, but remember, Aura has so much supply and workers that he can't actually build as much army. He also has... He does have a lot of orbitals, which is really good. And he's actually spending all of his minerals on turrets, which to me seems kind of unnecessary because I actually think the main base is where you need to defend from turrets rather than building like 14 turrets there. Like... I, and, and just focus on having more army and more money. So I do think Aura is going overboard. Now, the problem is you can build three turrets. Four or five BCs come in here. They're going to kill those turrets. They won't even lose a single BC. So you can spend 500 minerals here, there, 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 there. It stacks up to three, 4,000 minerals very quickly, right? We've got 14 turrets that are up and uh, two more that are building and he's queued like 10 more. So that's going to be at least 2,000, 3,000 minerals. And all it's going to do is tickle the battle cruisers and be an annoyance. It's going to stop Ruff from harassing with one battle cruiser, but it won't do too much. Now, what what the big problem is for Ruff, and I've mentioned it, is Thors are just going to win head to head. And you can be like, oh, I've got Widow Mines. They'll help with Vikings. They will not help against Thors. Thors have seven range. A Widow Mine has about five range, I think, is, is the, the little radius. You can see it's just not that far, man. It's as far as a Marine shoots. It's, it's not that big. Now, he's going to have equal upgrades, but the battle cruisers are going to get hammered, dude. 250mm Punisher cannons. It's a 43 damage, 11 range shot versus massive. I mean, these Thors are going to destroy. I think Aura 
with the Vikings overhead as well, is going to play... I mean, he's just going to smash. Or he's got such a bigger economy. Ruff's going to have to pull off some cheek, cheeky tricks. He's trying to do Widow Mine Trap. So, yeah, he's really trying to lure Vikings in. Or he's going to go for a counter-attack right now. I guess he'll have to give up that top left base, but that is what it is. And you can see he's pushing in the Vikings, flying into the turrets. He's really bad. Aura. Oh, dude. Aura with the F2. Stop F2-ing, bro. Oh, my God. Finally lands the Vikings, but in range of a planetary. Meanwhile, he does lose a base of workers up there, which is actually kind of good for Aura because it clears up supply to build better units. But, oh, man, losing so many Vikings for no good reason. That being said, replacing them with Thors. And I've said Thors are the ultimate unit here in this situation. It's going to clear this base. Ruff is going to keep committing. Ruff can teleport home. But he knows he can't really fight that army very well unless he can get a big Widow Mine trap off. So he's bringing his Widow Mines home. The Battle Cruisers come in, kill even more cities. These turrets do absolutely nothing. As I pointed out earlier, building armor hasn't been made yet either. And you can see the turrets get a few shots off and they just die. They don't do much. The Thors do all need to be in single fire mode, but this is only four Thors versus a lot of Battle Cruisers, guys. And you see, with just one or two Thors on their own against 10 BCs, obviously that's going to go the way of the BCs. Thors are popping out with the turrets, but oh no! They're, they're actually just getting isolated. And Aura does bring back the Thor Viking, though. Ruff, you gotta get out of there. Ruff, get out of there. Okay, he started to lose his BCs, guys. He's trying to teleport back one or two at a time, but one of them goes down as it tries to teleport. He's gonna try and land Yamato and then teleport out. Another BC falls, but so do a lot of these Vikings. Teleports home yet another battle cruiser. He's trying to get as much damage as he can because Ruff's economy is so bad. He wants to hurt the economy of Aura and the production of Aura before getting out of here. I think it is time now to leave. He's going to teleport down that right side of the map. See if he can grab some more things before he leaves. He killed off most of the Vikings, and he knows the Thors are immobile. These turrets will be a slight annoyance, but I don't think they'll get that much done. Ruff still on 10 BCs, building two more. He is doubling down on battle cruisers, which means he's going to have to play a base trade style. He cannot fight these Thors, guys. 13 Thors versus 10 battle cruisers. I, my understanding, and I'm pretty sure this is correct because I've, I've tried it a few different times, is the Thors kick the crap out of the BCs. And you can argue the Thors even beat the Ravens because they shoot the Ravens down from so far away. The Ravens can't get many Matrixes off very well. Ravens, if they can interference Matrix, either of these units are amazing. But no one's really got the opportunity to go there right now. Or is down to, what, 69 SCVs, but doesn't have that many command centers. So has to keep, like, spreading these SCVs back to these bases, rebuilding. It's going to come across with the Thors. There are some Widow Mines. Oh, okay, that's cute. The Widow Mines are going to kill maybe a Thor. They killed a Viking, damage some Thors. But you see, as long as Aura has scans, you can just clear those Widow Mines from out of range. There's no tanks. I, I think if you have like eight siege tanks behind a planetary, obviously Thors can't engage that. And that's that's the problem with Aura's composition being just Thors with some Vikings. It's a real A-move army that Aura is using right now. Also, Aura has forgotten 3-3. Three, three. So he's down two upgrades. I don't think that matters. I still think the Thors are going to scale way better than the BCs in these big fights. How many BCs are up to? 12 with three more building up against the 13 Thors. The Thors will march on forward. Ruff does have high sec auto tracking, so his planetary can shoot as far as the Thors. And you see, they do get start getting hit, but I mean, they're going to take it down so fast. Thors hammer landing with a vicious thwunk and uh, smashes that planetary fortress. Random turrets through the middle of the map. They're going to death. Gets 100 damage on a BC. It's something. It's not too bad. We've got more Vikings and Thors on the way. They're going to try and come home to deal with this army. So far, the Vikings have not been used very well. You can tell Aura just not really using control groups at all. There we go. Does do a bit of nice manual micro, but the Yamatos are so big. If you don't have the Thors there to deal with it, these Thors are getting stuck behind each other a bit. You can see whenever they land hits, look at how fast the battle cruisers die when they've got a pack of Thors shooting them, which Ruff, he's very mature. He's like, nope, nope, don't give that opportunity. Thors need to move to the right right now. Look at that. Ruff goes up to the high ground. He says, Thors can't catch me. Thors might beat BCs head to head. But we are seeing that BCs can cause them some real issues. Ruff just diving on the economy right now, ignoring the, 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 the Thors. Gets a Yamato off from one of those Vikings. Guns one down with his regular attack. And look at how much damage he's done. Or his Thors are running it down around, chasing his own tail. Thors might be able to win if they fight. But right now we're watching the more agile battle cruisers. And it's so weird to say that because they are battle cruisers out positioning. But ooh, he did just lose two or three BCs. Nice interference matrix coming in. It's time to leave, I think, for Ruff. He's got one more BC there deep in the red. He wants to pick off that Viking before he teleports out. These Thors, if they can get on top of this, would be massive. Uh, but they just, there's only ever one or two Thors shooting at a time. And every single battle cruiser is shooting for basically the entire time. And they all teleport home after ransacking Aura's base. Aura has still got 15 Thors. There's only 10 BCs left after that. Seven BCs have died to five Thors. Most of those Thors, individual ones that rallied out. Aura still has a top base. That base, two bases mining. 
Ruff has a full base here, and his natural has got a tiny bit of minerals left on it. Widowmine's walk out and kill a siege tank that was still over here. Ooh, nice little Widowmine ambush. That's very cute. Takes out a Viking and a few siege tanks. There is only like, what, one orbital, two orbitals for detection. And he's just dropped all of his energy into mules. Has aura, or has got to regret spending so much money on missile turrets now. Definitely needs to be scanning these widow mines to take him out. He's going to go across and try to just win the game. Still has a much better army that Ruff cannot deal with. But Ruff is like, uh, he's got a good understanding of it. He's played Mass Thor before. He's played Mass Battlecruiser before. And he clearly is showing us like, yeah. I can't win a frontal fight, so just keep going around. He, he was repairing a little bit. He's going across the map. He, I, I, if he fights, he just loses. So he just runs. He just runs. Guys, the, one of the best things you can learn to become a better StarCraft player is when you can't win a fight. If you can just look at a fight and go, nope, and then just go around and go for the base trade and just frustrate your opponent, it can be huge. Oh, oh, Aura. Aura saw the Widow Mines, but actually moved a Thor in. And of course, a widow mine for a Thora. Trade Ruff is happy to take. The widow mines do borrow again a bit too early, but no second scan available. And the widow mines are actually doing pretty sick damage. Ruff finds one of the only remaining two orbital commands. Every SCV goes down. They try to run, but you can see their trail of futility there. The Thors are once again going to come home. I feel like you could just move in and kill his production aura. I mean, you, you moved across to the base trade, maybe even split the Thors in half. I think like seven Thors could actually cause a big problem for that many BCs. Uh, especially with Viking support rallying out. But the Vikings are once again going to fight on their own, which means they're going to get Yamato'd. Aura, try to just be a bit too lazy with this. Ruff is showing that you can have technical mech control. Aura is showing a much more loose hand. It's much more, I make lots of things and throw them at you. But Ruff, he's so in, he's got so much intent in what he's doing. And look at this, the Vikings have done nothing. Remember, they also do not have attack upgrades up against the six armor battlecruisers. And look at this, another command center that just got finished building is going to go down here. And the Thors aren't sure which way to go. Split your Thors up, Aura, but Aura has not been splitting up all game long. Needs to send half the Thors in the main, keep half of them down here. But Aura's... Wait, wait, did you... Aura just lost every SCV. That was the last command center. I thought there was one more. Aura doesn't have a single SCV. Oh my god. Aura has massively massively screwed up just a moving thors back and forwards across the map such good macro but clearly unfamiliar with this situation rough having really good technical understanding he's like dude as long as i don't fight you i mean we always say battle cruisers are one of the best late game units and there's a lot of people who are always like twitch chat each one's like no they're not i try to them all the time they just die and it's like you got to understand that it's if you use it correctly and the trick is it's best for you martoing and running away and running in a base killing some stuff teleporting home it's kind of like the ultimate harassment base trade style unit it's not for fighting head on it's for going around and dealing with them that way and check it out ruff's got another base up mining he's pumping widow mines three at a time so he's realizing hey dude i just killed all your detection you actually don't have any detection anymore or has got buildings that can be protected of course by the the um the thors but you know what the battle crews could go clear up every building and then just mass your out of the factories not even fight the thors not to mention okay ruff is gonna lose this base that sucks he runs his scvs away would have been good if he flew this away a bit earlier bunch of scvs go down but these thors are gonna be trying to run around the widow mines and there's more and more widow mines coming out i mean oh this is huge yeah so ruff realizing they weren't positioned quite right he wants to borrow them probably here and he's like yeah there's no way around that what do you do as aura what do you do? Or is like, oh, we can't go there. There's widow mines there. If I walk through them, they're just gonna get free shots and there's no way to punish them. Oh my God. And hey, look at that. Five, six turrets in a row. What did that do, guys? This is what I'm talking about. This is why you do not really want to mass turrets. If you can get a few turrets at each base, two turrets is good because even one or two turrets can stop one BC because you can mass repair it. But if they bring more BCs, it's just, it's it's futile. It's all about having other units you can respond with. So uh, right now, Aura's trying to steer around and deny the bases. We'll find another one of Ruff's expansions, but he has more commands than his behind that. And the thing is, he can move these Widow Mines, right? So if, if he can figure out where this army is, and he can see the starport. So he can kind of figure out wherever the starports are. That's where the army is going. And oh, BCs. Oh no, this is the fight. Look at that. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four, five. Five BCs just disappeared right there. Down to seven. Get out of there, Ruff. Get out of there. Oh my God. He just lost five BCs in the blink of an eye. If that shows you that if Ruff at any point actually went and fought, especially broadside, the way he came into a line, a combat line of Thor's, he go really bad for him. Ruff is going to dance around. He gets one of the factories burning the other so it's just one factory two starports left he's gonna clear these turrets up 
And I think at this point, it's time to move your Widow Mines forward, right? You've killed the last detection on the map. The Widow Mines are spread everywhere. Time to move them forward. This command center will go down, but Ruff's already building more command centers. As long as he keeps some SCVs alive, he should be good. Oh no, Ruff, Ruff, he didn't run his base away. He is gonna lose that one, but I don't think it really matters because he's got more mining elsewhere. He's got more mules that can go down. He's gonna run these SCVs away. The Widow Mine's moving forward in little pockets. And at this point, you have the ultimate army but it's blind. It's like we're watching a nine foot tall ogre. He's got 400 pounds of pure muscle on his body. And right now, he is being undone by the fact that there is a rogue with an invisibility spell on him, just slowly slicing away at his calves, just slowly chopping at his legs. And there's just nothing he can do about it because somehow, Attacking from invisibility doesn't break the invisibility, and Aura right now is just running around with this giant, muscular, apex predator unit that simply cannot see its opposition, and it is dying to invisible units. I mean, let's look at this from Aura's vision. Once again, you see those tracking lines, you feel those explosions, and it's like you're just watching these Thors run around and come to, to terms with the futility of the situation they're in. Ruff's building more command centers! Ruff's got Widow Mines and PCs everywhere. He's trying to repair his battle cruisers, though he's out of gas mining at the moment. And Aura is just running around in circles going, oh man, I was so far ahead of this game. Two to one and the units lost. That shows you how much Aura was ahead. But remember, Aura could have won, pulled the whole army home for like four Hellbats. Actually, there was like two Hellbats left in the base. And, and then Aura just never split the Thors up. Imagine when, when Ruff was pushing through like eight missile turrets here, 12 Vikings, if you had just six Thors with that. The BCs couldn't have really engaged it, and there could have been 10 Thors on the other side of the map, you know, running through and, and killing stuff, but Aura just, I think, 1A-ing or F2A moving the army around a little bit too much, and that's why we got to be careful in general. Mass Thor, it can do stuff, but oh man, not again. Ow! <laughs> God, I uh, just, just, yeah. Or, or a common of terms. Coming to terms with what's happening right now. This is absolutely ridiculous. Guys, just before we get to the end of this, I want to say a pretty big thank you to everyone who's been supporting the Patreon. Let's quickly take a look at the wall. Modern Totem, Max Ed, Kurt Alessi, and Jacob G. If you guys want to support the Patreon and get your name up there on the wall of bacon, please get out there and check out the Patreon. It's in the description below. We really appreciate the support. It makes a huge difference. Ads don't pay that much, but it does allow us to keep doing the content. Thank you, everybody who's already supported, either in the past or currently. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy casting these games. Big thanks, of course. If you guys want to check out Ruff's YouTube, don't forget, guys, he does have a channel. We've got that link below, and you can see a lot of these three players' games played live from his point of view, as well as other games that I'd never end up casting. So he's got a whole bunch of games going up there. I think he does daily uploads. Definitely check it out. Right now, we are watching, of course, Aura like, I found a base. Maybe I have a chance. But these Widow Mines are going to come off cooldown. And there's more where that came from. The Widow Mines are just marauding around the map. And these, these Thors walking through a field full of rakes. One whips up, smacks him in the face. Another one whip, whip, whips up. Okay, goes around. He's like, okay, we go around this way. To be fair, Ruff probably could have moved these Widow Mines forward a little bit quicker. He's trying to make an orbital. Don't lose the orbital. Okay, he's just going to bring his BCs. He could just teleport in and kill the buildings, to be honest. The Widow Mines trying to get up there. Lift the command center, bro. Get the command center out. Okay, the Widow Mines going to try and bar it on top. The moment they're in the ground. Oh, three Thors go down. And I think it's, I, honestly, it's BC teleport time. There we go. There we go. And Ruff's like, hello. Have you have, have you heard of our Lord and Savior Yamato cannon? Don't leave the game just before. Or it does drop the GG, but at least let the Yamatos land. The Thors there. I mean, I think we lost 20 Thors. How many Thors went down in this game? 23 Thors for 11 battlecruisers. And guys, even though the Thor is the apex predator in a head-to-head one-on-one fight, we show that StarCraft strategy, killing your opponent's detection, and then using some sneaky Widow Vines turns that completely upside down. Rough, a master of the base trade as always. Well played, mate.